Have you heard of the legend? The legend of the human boy thrust into the mythical world of the gods of death, soul-eating monsters, and beings on a level of existence that surpasses your wildest dreams. This is a story of friendship, a story of determination, ambition, pain, sadness, loss, fear, sacrifice, and courage. It is the embodiment of one man's journey to find balance within himself and the world around him. This is the legend of Ichigo Kitasaki. They say that Ichigo Kurosaki was a gifted human being with the ability to see spirits from a young age. His life was relatively normal until he encountered the female soul reaper Rukia Kuchiki, a soul reaper from the 13th squad of the Gotei 13. Rukia was sent there to protect Katakura Town from the Hollows, but during a fierce battle against the Hollow attempting to consume the soul of Ichigo and his family, she was heavily wounded and broke the sacred soul reaper law. She gave her powers to Ichigo. That night, Ichigo Kurosaki became a soul reaper and in his first encounter with the Hollow, he showed no fear and struck down the hollow with three blows. He would then take on the job as Rukia's substitute and protect Katakura Town from many hollow attacks, including the elusive hollow known as Grant Fisher. In fact, they say that Ichigo Kurosaki actually wounded a Menos Grande and banished it from the world of the living. The seeds of what would become a legendary Soul Reaper were already taken root. In a cruel twist of fate, Rukia Kuchiki was apprehended by her older brother, Captain of Squad 6 and current leader of the Kuchiki clan, Byaki Akuchiki. Ichigo Kurosaki held his own against Lieutenant Abarai, but was soundly defeated by Byakuya, who left him broken, beaten, and powerless. Heaven shattered his soul chain and soul sleep. That should have been the end of Ichigo Kurosaki, but he did not give up. Surprisingly, Ichigo Kurosaki had soul reaper powers of his own, and with the aid of the exiled ex-captain and head of the Department of Research and Development, Kisuke Uhara, Ichigo and his band of misfits stormed into Soul Society in an attempt to rescue Rukia Kuchiki. The tales of his strength and accomplishments would only grow from here on out. He defeated Jidambo, the fearless gatekeeper, who until meeting Ichigo had a perfect record of stopping intruders. He clashed with the captain of Squad 3, Gin Ichimaru, a prodigy who was once known as 100 Suits Gin. Ichigo fought back this captain and lived to tell the tale. With the walls to the Serite fully erect, one would think that he would give up and turn back, but no. Despite the existence of the Shikonoku, which is made of Seki Seki rock, a rock that repels all forms of Reishi from above and below the Serite, Ichigo, with the help of the Shiba head Kukaku Shiba, forced their way through the barrier by way of a Reishi Kaku and invaded the Serite. Never before had anyone attempted a stunt as crazy as this and succeeded, but its feats do not end there. He clashed swords with Ikaku Madarame, third seed of Squad 12, the combat squad of the Gotei 13, and defeated him in battle. He then fought against Renji Ibarai in a battle to the death and managed to defeat him. Refusing to give up, he forced his way towards the Repentance Cell and ran into the monster that is Kenpachi Zoraki. Zoraki and Ichigo had what can only be described as a battle for the ages as Ichigo pushed Kenpachi to his limits and powered himself to a stalemate against the mighty captain. Ichigo would forever gain the respect of Kenpachi, and it is said that to this day, Kenpachi seeks a rematch to settle the score once and for all. After an intense face-off against Byakuya on Repentance Cell Bridge, Ichigo Kurosaki was taken in by the Flashmaster and former captain of Squad 2, Yoruichi Shihoen. She took him under her wing and taught him how to achieve the pinnacle of Soul Reaper's soul release, the formidable Bankai. With Rukia's execution drawing closer every passing minute, Ichigo Kurosaki stormed onto Sogyoku Hill in the presence of multiple captains and lieutenants and paired the Sogyoku thought to be the equivalent of a million Zon Pakuto. He rescued Rukia Kuchiki, handed her off to Renji, a foe turned friend, and bested three Shikai released lieutenants without the use of his Zon Pakuto. He would then finally have the battle he desired. He would finally battle Byakuya Kuchiki. Their clashes atop Sogoku Hill will be remembered forever, as Ichigo Kurosaki showcased a Banka he achieved in less than three days, Tensa Zongetsu. They say that just with the release of his Bankai, a tornado formed atop the execution platform on Zogyoku Hill. His tremendous speed terrorized the elite captain, and Miyaki Akuchiki was forced to use his most powerful technique, Senbun Zakura Kageyoshi Shuke Hakuteiken. The skies atop Zogyoku Hill were painted in a fierce clash of white and black. After the dust settled, Miyaki Akuchiki would admit defeat and Ichigo would claim his victory. His battle was not yet over because the captain of Squad 5, Aizen Sosuke, rebelled against the Soul Society and declared war on the world. 
Ichigo was a pawn in Aizen's plan and as Aizen rose towards the sky, he commended the young man for his deeds. Ichigo was well on his way to becoming a legend. On this day, Ichigo had been the catalyst for Soul Society's salvation. Without the invasion of Ichigo and his friends, Aizen might have stayed hidden for longer and assassinated all who stood in his way, taking over everything from within. Ichigo was Soul Society's savior, and Soul Society repaid him by instituting him as an official substitute Soul Reaper. With that, Ichigo returned home and there was peace for a while. Aizen Sosuke ordered his army of Arankar, Hollows who would cross over to the realm of the Shinigami to attack Katakuta Town. They say that Ichigo Kurosaki was soundly beaten in battle against these foes, and to counter this attack, the head captain sent a task squad led by Captain Hitsugaya to aid Ichigo Kurosaki. They fought back multiple attacks from the Arankar as Ichigo was approached by a former captain of the Gotei 13, Shinji Hirako. Shinji would take Ichigo under his wing and teach him to control his newfound hollow powers. You see, Aizen intended to break down the borders between Soul Reaper and Hollow by using the Hogyoku, and Ichigo is such a being. Ichigo Kurosaki was born with Hollow and Soul Reaper powers, a truly generational feat. Unfortunately, Ichigo Kurosaki's friend Orihime Inoue was captured by the Arankar and abducted into Waco Mundo. This was Aizen's ploy to lure Ichigo into Waco Mundo, the wellspring of the Hollow. Ichigo stormed into Waco Mundo, finding his way through the Prevodon Espada defeating the battle-hungry Grimjow as Spada number 6 and making his way to the Spada number 4, Ukiyo Schiffer. The accounts of this battle are relatively unknown. Only two people witnessed this battle, Orihime Inoue and Uryu Ishida. According to them, Ukiyo defeated Ichigo and blew a hole right through his chest. This was certainly meant to be Ichigo's end, but the hollow inside him would awaken and the battle that ensued can only be described as a systematic beatdown by Ichigo's hollow on Ukiyo. He severed his arm, smashed him into gigantic pillars, and caused destruction that ravaged the land for miles. Ichigo would defeat Ukiyora and recover from his wounds. He would then be instructed by the captains who came to aid him and his allies to head directly to Katakura Town to help in the battle against Aizen. Upon arrival, the captains would switch their strategy to protecting Ichigo from being attacked by Aizen in order to give him the best chance to defeat him once and for all since Ichigo was the only one to not have seen Aizen's complete hypnosis. Captain Yamamoto would give Ichigo the opening he desired, but even though Ichigo landed a devastating blow, it would prove ineffective against Aizen's regenerative powers. Reinforcement would then arrive in the form of Ichigo's father Ishin Kurosaki, Yoruichi Shihoen, and Kisuke Urahara. While they fought Aizen, Ichigo clashed with Ginichimar for a second time, but even though Ichigo had come a long way in terms of strength, he was bested in battle against a former captain and ultimately spared. As Aizen left to Soul Society, intending to create the Oaken by destroying the real Karakuta town, Ishin and Ichigo found a way to stifle the restrictive currents in the Dongai, and after overcoming an inner struggle between himself and his Hollow and Zonpakuto spirits, Ichigo emerged from the precipice world older, stronger, and intent on defeating Aizen. After forcing Aizen out of Katakura Town and onto the outskirt wasteland, Ichigo pushed Aizen Sosuke to his very limits with his fierce physical prowess and his newly acquired final Getsuke Tenjo technique, Mugetsu, the Moonless Knight. That was to be the end of Aizen Sosuke, but his regenerative powers proved to be truly formidable as he managed to survive Ichigo's final attack. Luckily, Kisuke Urohara's seal in Kido kicked in at the 11th hour and Aizen Sosuke was sealed and defeated. Ichigo Kurosaki managed to push him to his very limits and allow for Kisuke's technique to take effect. Ichigo saved the world, but the cost for his power would soon emerge to claim its due, as he lost his power soon after. Soul Society would not leave their debt unpaid as Urahara was commissioned to forge a Reishi blade that would restore Ichigo Kurosaki's powers. Right in the midst of a confrontation between Ichigo and the first substitute Soul Reaper, Ginjo Kugo, Rukia Kuchiki stabbed Ichigo with a Reishi blade and restored his Soul Reaper powers. Re-energized, Ichigo struck down and killed Ginjo Kugo and in a last act of respect to his substitute Soul Reaper predecessor, buried his body in the world of the living. Peace was finally attained and all was well until Soul Society received a warning from the past, a warning of a blood war to come. While on a trip to Wakumundo in an attempt to save Dondo Chaka, Ichigo ran into a Quincy named Quilge and after defeating him, Ichigo was told of the battle occurring in Soul Society. Soul Society was attacked by the Vaunton Lake, a Quincy army led by the Quincy King himself, Yuha Bok. Ichigo rushed towards the Serite, breaking Kilge's jail, thought to be unbreakable by anyone without Quincy blood, and made his way to the battlefield. 
he made quick work of a Stone Raider and defiantly launched his sword right in the path of Yuha Bok. Even though Yuha proved to be stronger on that day, Ichigo dealt him the only blow he suffered in battle, despite the fact that he had fought against the head captain moments before. Ichigo tried his hardest but was defeated and his Tenzo's on Getsu was broken. With Soul Society in shatters, Squad Zero came down to their aid. They requested a few things, one of which was to escort Ichigo Kurosaki to the Soul King's palace. Upon arrival, Ichigo was sent through the various captain quarters and sent off on a journey of self-discovery. He was confronted by his father and learned the truth of his lineage, birth, and power. Within the powerhouse of his soul existed Quincy, Soi Hollow, and Fulbank Ryotsu. The revelation of all the secrets surrounding who he was were finally revealed as Ichigo finally achieved true synergy and balance within himself. The progenitor of the Zonpak To, Nimaya Oetsu, would then reforge Ichigo Zonpak To into two dual-wield swords. Ichigo Kurosaki became only the third Soul Reaper in history to wield two Zonpak To's behind Shinsui Kyoroku's Katen Kyokotsu and Jusuro Kitake's Sogyo no Kotowari. Ichigo received battle armor formed from the very bones of the squad as he remembers to allow him to pass through the barriers between the Soul King's palace and the Serete. The range of his energy as he approached the battlefield spanned over the entire Serete as Ichigo landed onto the battlefield to save Kenpachi Zuraki, who was heavily wounded in battle against the mightiest Stone Knight, Grimmy. Ichigo would make quick work of the Quincy girls who attacked him and even managed to hold off more Quincy's before charging towards Yuha Bok. Unfortunately, Yuha opened a gateway to the Soul King's palace and immediately ascended, prompting Ichigo and the others to pursue him. During his confrontation with the Quincy Empire King, Ichigo would mistakenly cut down the Soul King and begin the countdown to destruction. They say that the Quincy blood that existed within his veins reacted to the presence of the Soul King and could not allow such a being to live. Luckily, through the efforts of Yoruichi and Ugitake's Mimihagi-sama, worldwide destruction was abated for a while. Ichigo would then make his way to Yuha Bok's throne room for the final showdown in what can only be described as a battle for the fate of all the worlds. Ichigo would reveal the effects of his inner synergy by unveiling his Horn of Salvation ability along with his Grand Rei Getsugu technique. These attacks destroyed the entire Inner Holy Shrine, but Yuha Bok refused to be defeated. Fearing the power of Ichigo's Bankai, using his ability to see the future, destroyed Tensei Zongetsu and left Ichigo for dead. Ichigo's allies would come to his aid and restore his power using the combination of Orihime and Tsukishima's powers, and with newfound resolve, Ichigo would head towards the battlefield yet again. As Ichigo's former enemy, Aizen Sosuke, battled Yuha Bok, Ichigo came in from behind and slashed Yuha, but yet again, the Quincy King refused to be beaten, rewriting futures where even he had died. Just when all hope was lost, Uryu Ishida, wielding a silver arrow, struck Yuha Bok and robbed him of his powers, allowing Ichigo the opportunity to cleave the Quincy King clean in two. As the Falling King died, he grabbed onto Ichigo's blade and spoke his final words. Those who breathe will continue to pass each day, living in fear for all eternity. As Ichigo looked down, he could only feel pity for the fallen king. Even he was unable to escape the terrifying gaze of the reality that is death. What he failed to understand is that the fear of death is what gives those who live a reason to tread forward and overcome their fear. Their ever-growing journey overcoming fear is what is known as courage, and Ichigo Kurosaki embodied that journey, plagued by the fear and guilt of being the reason his mother died. Plagued by the fear of losing himself and his sanity to his hollow, plagued by the fear of not being able to protect what he held dear, he tread onward, overcoming adversities, falling, crying, weeping, lashing out in anger and rage, but still he walked on, down the path we call courage. And what awaited him at the end of this journey was a name left immortalized, a story left eternal. His memory would live on forever in the history of soul society, as the human, Turned Soul Reaper, who gave everything to save the world. This is a legend of courage. This is a legend of sacrifice. This is the legend of Ichigo Kurosaki.